Hey everybody, it's Mindy, and this is my weekly whipping chat. So, um, settle in and uh, spend some time with me. I gotta finish setting things up here, like get my light pad on and, you know, things like that. I do have some drills in my tray, but I think I'm gonna need more. I'm probably gonna need to switch colors here. Um, anyhow, um, the first part of this video will be information, updates, catch up, that kind of thing. Um, about what we're doing, what's going on. And then um, the last half will be a story. Yeah, I have a theme for my stories for this um, event. So we'll talk about that when we get there. So first of all, what am I working on? I'm working on my Chuck Pinson. Yes, the big old bad boy Chuck Pinson. I, yeah, I decided to work on the big one. I had, you know, some thoughts in mind, but I decided to go with this one. Um, it is called, hang on, I'm trying to find the name again. I always forget it. Um, where is it? It's way down here. Treasures of the Great Outdoors. Yes, that's the name of this. I always have to look. It's got a long title. Anyhow, it's what I'm working on for the Chuck Along 2. Chuck Along 2 that I am doing with Maritza from Kiss My Crafts. Yep. And um, I think you may have heard about it. <laughs> I think you may have heard about it. Okay, before I get going, let me just say a couple things. The weather changed here drastically. It's only 55 degrees right now. It's cold. It's very cold. And it's been raining. Raining makes my allergies horrible. So I'm very sniffly. I am very, uh, if you have allergies, you'll know what I'm talking about. My face hurts, you know, just, uh. so bear with me. Like I said, I'm sniffly and looking down at this canvas is not going to help that situation out at all. Took my allergy medicine this morning, which is just over the counter. It's not like I have a prescription or anything, but it doesn't seem to have really done anything. It hasn't, you know, nothing. So there's that. But today is Tuesday. I'm recording. I have to get this recorded to put it out tomorrow, which is Wednesday. So if you hear some sniffles, I am so sorry, but I gotta just plow through it. Just plow through. Full steam ahead. <laughs> right? Okay. So there's that. I apologize. Anyhow, oh, that is sticky. My plastic is up here somewhere and I don't know where, but I know I get to a certain point and drills won't stick because the plastic's there. I can't see it though. I don't have washi tape on it to separate it. No, nope, no plastic there yet. Okay, we're good. All right. So Chuck Along. It's where we're working on a Chuck Pinson diamond painting, right? Um, we're working on them all of September and I'll be working on mine into October. <laughs> you guys are rocking though. The people who are participating in the Chuck uh, paint along, you guys are rocking it. We're seeing pictures and I'm just like, oh, you guys are blazing through those things. And I'm like, I'm still over here and I don't even have a quarter of mine done. Right. A quarter. You got it. I mean, I've got a big section done, but I mean, I still have more to go up here yet. <laughs> And when I get that done, it's a quarter. That's, yeah, I'm not making the best time, but it's a big one. Okay, anyhow, there's that. But you guys keep rocking, man. You just keep doing what you're doing and posting those pictures. So here's what we're doing, right? Um, Maritz and I have the Facebook group, Diamond Moments and Crafts with a K. If you haven't joined, Please join, answer the questions, and click yes, I agree to the rules, and we'll let you in. Okay, it's pretty simple. And it's really easy. Maritz is doing all of our record keeping for this event, and it's really easy for her to find everybody's posts if you put them in the Facebook group. Now, for the first week, she put a post up and said, start here, put your start picture here, and she went through and she grabbed everybody. Now, she also went to Instagram because we do have the hashtag on Instagram, Chuck Along 2. 
And so then she went over to Instagram and a few more people posted in Instagram because maybe they don't do Facebook. Okay. So that's fine. Um, but if you do have Facebook, it is really, really pretty easy for us to find you in our group. If you post under the weekly post. Now she has posted one for week two. So your week two progress picture can go in there and she'll add that. She's making a little spreadsheet for everybody. You know, she's got to check. Here's their start photo. Here's their week one progress photo. Here's, you know, you know how that goes. Got it. Okay. If you're only Instagram on Instagram only, because I know some people are, she will grab you over there on Instagram as well. But if you have the capability to post on Facebook, please try to do so. Okay. Um, there are so many. I last I knew she was like over 200 and some participants and she had a few that she was going to do some, um, verification of that came from Instagram. Um, so there may be a few more once she actually messages and, you know, get some information from a few people. So anyhow, um, we're having a great time. We're just thrilled with the participation that that many people are working on a Chuck Pinson with us. And, um, in case you don't know, there are prizes. Yes, there are some pretty fantastic prizes to go with the Chuck along like three $50 gift cards to diamond art club. Yep. Three people can win a gift card. Um, and we'll talk about how you're going to win those later. Cause we want to make sure they go to the right people, you know, and three signed prints of Chuck Pinson's. Yes. The Pinson's were very generous and sent some prints and we're going to have three, three people can win those. Awesome. Right? Yeah. Pretty cool. Okay. I think it's pretty special. I've said the word epic a few times and I meant epic when I said epic, right? Um, so yeah. Uh, the other exciting, exciting news is that I think I got the date right now, September 26th, last Saturday of the month during my live, Mr. Chuck Pinson will be in my live doing an interview type live that night. And we're going to pick his brain and we're going to see what it's like to be Chuck Pinson, what it's like to be an artist. How did he become an artist? How did he get started? You know, how does he, how does he create these beautiful landscapes? Um, where's his inspiration come from? All of those things we're going to cover in that live. And that's going to be super, super exciting, right? Super exciting to talk to the, the man behind the beauty. Yeah. The man behind the beauty be pretty cool. I'm super excited about it. I mean, I am stoked that I get to interview this man, right? <laughs> so anyhow, that is the chuck along. So in the Facebook group, look for a new post each week, week one, two, three, four, try to post your pictures there. Instagram hashtag chuck along too. Okay. All right. So that's the Chuck along. Yeah. All right. Next thing talked about the Facebook group. Um, yes, we hit 500 members. <laughs> it was like bada bing, bada boom. And we were at 500. I was like, just shocked, amazed, overjoyed, thrilled. All of those words you can think of that we have 500 members in our group that quickly. It's amazing. You guys are the best. Love every single one of you. You are the best. You're great. I just, I'm overwhelmed sometimes. Um, we're doing a 500, um, member giveaway. Okay. We're there. We hit the 500. So we're doing a giveaway. If you did not see it, it is in the group. You can find those things. If they're not at the top of the page, Go to announcements because I know Maritza and I both try to tag them as announcements if it's something that's very important. So if you don't see it right off, click at the top where it says announcements and you should be able to find all of the important stuff that her and I put up there. Not that the other stuff's not important, but that's the stuff that we put up there for you guys. The info you need about things. Okay. So, 
uh, there's that. Um, I will be doing, I've been numbering everybody's photo because I asked that you post a photo of your favorite diamond painting that you've done so far. Some people said they hadn't gotten one yet. And I said, well, then post a photo of what you're getting. What's on the way? What are you looking forward to? <laughs> you know, post something. Okay. Um, I've been numbering all of those comments and trying to keep up with them. You guys, there's a lot where I don't even know where we're at right now. 120, 100 and I don't know, somewhere in there, 120, 130, somewhere. So that's how many people are entered right now for our giveaway. Um, the giveaway is a cute, cute canvas from the Pink Raspberry. Cheryl from the Pink Raspberry has graciously asked to sponsor it, donate a canvas. I was like, awesome, yes, yeah, sweet. And it's this cute little bear in the window, it's super cute. So that is what the prize will be. And Cheryl will get your information and she will ship it right out to you, okay? Um, you can also buy that canvas. It's a $35 canvas. It does have ABs in it. But if you mention, you know, Diamond Moments and Crafts and our giveaway and whatnot, you could buy it for $30, okay? Pretty cool. Yeah, all you gotta do is mention, hey, I saw this on, you know, this Facebook group, blah, 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 blah. And you can get it for $30. Awesome. Awesome. So we're about there, you guys. I think, I mean, I think I'm going to give you like today. Today's Wednesday. The end of today, I think we're done with the entries for that. Okay. And then I'll do the drawing. Yeah. So the next thing will be the drawing for the giveaway. And then I'll let Cheryl know who won and she will, you know, get in touch with you or you get in touch with her and, um, She'll get that sent out to you. If you have not heard of the Pink Raspberry, um, I will link her below in this video so you can go look at some of the stuff that she has at her shop. She's in Canada and she prints and puts the glue on and packages the drills and makes her own diamond paintings. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. So that's an exciting gift. Yes. Thank you again to Cheryl. All right. One more thing about the group. It grew, like I said, pretty fast. And we're over 500. We're pushing 550 now, I believe. And sometimes Maritza and I, we've been keeping up, but we've gotten a little overwhelmed at times with all of the love you guys are showing us. So we kind of went out and I'd say hired, but we're not paying them. <laughs> We, we went out and we located, corralled, <laughs> some help. <laughs> so we have some new helpers. They're called moderators. We have some moderators in our group. Um, one of them, a lot of you will be familiar with, and that's Yareli. Yareli um, is fairly new to YouTube, has her own channel. She's been on Instagram for a while. Um, she's pretty awesome. And she's going to be in the group helping out, maybe doing some of the jobs that Maritza and I don't necessarily have as much time to get to anymore. Just kind of helping out. She'll be in the group looking around, looking at posts, um, always there to answer questions if people have questions. Um, so if you if you have a question and one of us can't get to right away, feel free to, you know, shout out to your rally. And we have another person, too. And that is Philip. Now, Philip is Maritza's best friend. Like, yeah, twinsy person, kind of, you know. Um, she's known him for a long time, and he's already been in the site a lot, and he watches it, and he's come back and told her things and whatnot, you know, things that are going on and stuff like that. So he's already kind of doing the job that um, we would like our moderators to do. So Philip will be joining as a moderator and um, we could not be happier to have the help, seriously. Um, there are days, Maritza messaged me one day and she's like, how are you doing this? How are you keeping up with your YouTube and your recording and your comments and the group and this and that? And I'm like, well, unlike you, I don't work during the day and I'm on my phone a lot. <laughs> And that is the truth. I am just on my phone a lot, looking at things, checking messages, comments, Facebook, Instagram, 
yeah so we are very happy to have the help thank you very much Ureli and Philip so you'll see them around making comments and they can answer questions and things like that so welcome aboard welcome aboard yes um so I think that takes care of that part of the business um, I recently did my second membership giveaway you guys memberships when I started it I was like oh, I don't know I don't know if anybody wants to do such a thing but you guys have overwhelmingly said yeah yeah we'll support you that way and I'm like sweet that's awesome and so I started a monthly membership giveaway I've done two now and um, that's awesome it's just awesome you guys I'm having a good time. I love giving things away. I love meeting people, talking to people. Just, it's been so great. Everything is just, it's great. You guys, it's just great. All right. Um, what else? Business-wise, can't think of anything else right now. You know I'll think of something later and I'll be like, man, I should have said that or I should have said that. Um, after the chuck-along, uh, is I'm just going to do drills and chills. I'm not working with anybody. I'm just going to work on finishing up this canvas. And I would really, really, really like to be able to put some time into one of those new crystal canvas arts paintings that I got. You know, the truck or the lantern. Something very fun and fallish. That's my hope that this won't take me, you know, two whole months. That I'll have some time to work on something else. That's my plan. In November... In November, though, look out, look out, guys. We're back, or I'm back, some people are back. <laughs> There's gonna be another project, event going on in November. Um, we haven't even really started planning exactly what we're gonna do. We have a general idea, but that's about it so far. But stay tuned for that because that will be exciting. Yeah, that will be exciting for sure. They're all exciting, but you know, just, yeah something new all right um let me think i really think that that is pretty much all of the business if you just stumbled upon this video and a couple people have i've gotten some messages like um i don't know what this is i just got here um can you tell me what's going on <laughs> i'm like sure uh th this is diamond painting have you ever heard of it the person was like, nope, I paint, but not with diamonds. <laughs> it's like, okay, so let me explain a little bit. And then, you know, I said, and then you go watch a video or two and you can learn more about it. So I know there are new people out there. Um, I hope you're enjoying yourselves. I hope you're getting something out of it, learning some things, whatever, having fun. There's a lot of people that are doing a chuck for the first time. Yay. Welcome to confetti land. If you don't know what I mean, that means, you know, like, Every other color is something different. <laughs> so that's confetti. Can't do a whole lot of multi-placing. I think I've done four. Four, I've gotten a few times a row of four. Some rows of three, but that's, you know, right in here, I guess there was some more. Here's some longer lines, but there's just not a lot of it. Not a lot of color blocking, that's for sure. But that's what makes them so beautiful. So I hope you're enjoying yours. Um, so yeah, like I said, if you're new, subscribe. If you like what you're seeing, come back, see some more. Um, check out memberships. You should be able to look right below this video where it says subscribe and next to it, it says join. Just go check it out. Look at the join. Look-ins for free. It doesn't cost you anything to go look. See if it's something you're interested in. I've been a little lax the last couple weeks about posting stuff for members, but I had so many things going on with items for review and getting this chalk rolling and all that stuff. I owe you guys some stuff. I owe you some content. So a little short video coming for the square drill members and um, some pictures for the round drill members. So I apologize. It's been just a little bit of time, but Sometimes we just get a little swamped and that's where I've been. I've been in swamp land. Yep, I've been swamped. <laughs> All right. So I think that takes us to the whipping chat portion. 
But before I start talking about my outdoor adventures, I'm going to go take care of my runny nose. I'll be back. All right. As I said earlier, my whipping chats are going to be about adventures in the great outdoors because, well, that's the name of this painting. <laughs> adventures in the great outdoors. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so my family has always been outdoorsy kind of people. So I have lots of things that I've done outdoors. I've talked about Girl Scouts a little bit and the camping. Um, but yeah, lots of things outdoors. So I thought I would share some stories of adventures and things that happened in the great wilderness outdoors. And I thought the first one I would talk about, which is quite an interesting story, is the day I tried to drown. Yes, I tried to drown. Okay, let me explain. <laughs> Um, my parents and my family, we were always campers. We had a pop-up camper. We would go camping all over our state and things like that. Um, in Girl Scouts, we took the camper and we went out west with the Girl Scouts. This stupid thing won't go down. Let's just let it fall out. Just fall out. Um, so we camped all over the place. Um, I kind of remember a little bit a stormy night way up in the UP somewhere. Don't ask me where, because I don't remember. A stormy night, our camper was up on a little hill and it was so windy and so stormy that we thought we were all gonna blow away and die. We didn't, we survived. Clearly, we survived. Um, but another thing that my family liked to do was canoe, okay? Um, the church that we belonged to would do these annual canoe trips. All right. And you would go and you would put your canoes in at one point in the river. It was the Osaba River. If you want to look that up, it's in Michigan. <laughs> um, and then everybody would canoe down the river for a certain ways, pull off the river at some point and stop at like maybe a little park or a campground or something. And there would be some ladies from the church there. They would have lunch and things like that. And then um, there were even overnight trips where you would, you know, canoe all day and then get to a certain point and you would have your, your tent and stuff there and you would sleep there and camp there for the evening. Okay. Well, we did that every year. I don't even know how many years we did that, but it was a lot of years. And us kids would go. Um, now, some of the parents were a little more aggressive in their canoe trips and um, they got into like dunking people and tipping people over and stuff. But, you know, there was like the kid canoes and those we were safe. You know, nobody was going to come dump us out. <laughs> but it happened to be one of those times. I think we were stopping for the evening and we had come up onto the shore and gotten out and. Um, I think I was with the, the kid group, clearly. The adults that were being more mischievous were still coming in because, you know, they were too busy dunking each other in the river. So we were ahead of them. Um, so I know that my, my mom was there. And there was a couple other adults there. And they let us kids go out and play in the river. There was a little sandbar out there. Right up by the shore was pretty deep because that's where the canoes would come in. You know, they needed deeper water to come in. And um, then there was a sandbar kind of out in the middle of the water. So a bunch of the older kids, like the teenage kids and stuff were out there. We were out there playing on the sandbar. My mom let me go out there and play. And apparently I got off the sandbar, got into the river, if you know anything about rivers, that water is moving along. You know, it is rapidly moving water. <laughs> and I got off the sandbar. I got into the water. No, that was not what I wanted. I'm looking for number seven. It's 17. Okay. I got into the rapidly moving water, which is now deep because I'm over closer to the edge where the water is deeper for the canoes and was completely swept away. I was swept away, swept down the river, and the river is going quite rapidly. 
and I'm going with it, bobbing up and down, down the river. <laughs> and somebody's yelling, Mindy's, she, uh, you know, she's leaving. She's heading down the river. Somebody's got to get her. My mom, who is sitting, you know, by the edge of the river there, jumped into the river, fully clothed, shoes, socks, watch, everything, jumped in the river and had to swim down the river a ways to save me as I'm bobbing up and down, taking in water, floating away. She rescues me. She saves me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we get out, you know, and she makes sure I'm okay and I'm breathing and everything's okay and whatnot. And she goes back to, you know, doing what she was doing. Wait, the kids might not have been there at that time. The older kids, they might have come in later. Because the next thing you know, I'm back out in the river. And I'm over on the sandbar with the older kids. And guess what? It did not happen once, you guys. It happened twice. Next thing you know, I'm being swept down the river again. And this time, my mom hollered at some of the older kids that were over there on the sandbar. Get her, get her. And they're like, oh my gosh, there she goes. She's floating down the river again. You know, they'd already heard the story. Here she goes again. Go get Mindy. She's floating down the river. She's, you know, twice in the matter of just, you know, a short period of time. I tried to drown in the river and let the river sweep me away. Yep. You know, and did it phase me? I don't know. Not really. <laughs> it really didn't. I mean, it didn't stop me. It didn't give me any fear of the water or swimming or the river or anything, but yeah. So that's one of my experiences I remember from canoeing, trying to drown twice, twice. Great fun. So yeah, <laughs> another time we went on a canoe trip and this was not with the church. This was just with my family. Uh, it was a family canoe trip. My mom, my dad, my uncle, some cousins, my grandma. My grandma was there too. Now, my grandma was always, let's just say, a little larger person, okay? But we got grandma into this canoe. And my grandma always wore dresses because it was more comfortable for her, you know? She never had jeans or pants. She was always in a dress. So we got grandma into the canoe and she was with my dad. Figure my dad would be the safe person, you know. He'll make sure grandma's okay in the canoe. All right. So again, we're coming up to the shore to get out. And the water, for some reason, near the shore where it's deeper, always seemed swifter and faster and deeper. And it wasn't extremely deep there, but just, you know, much faster current. So they pull up and my dad's trying to get as close to the shore as possible to help grandma get out, right? And what happens at that moment when he's trying to like get out of the canoe, to pull it up, to help get her out, but the current was swift and it tipped over. <laughs> it tipped over and promptly deposited my grandmother right there in the river legs up dress up here's grandma in the middle of the river now well not the middle she was at the edge <laughs> was she mad oh she was mad she was yelling at my dad jane what did you do you did that on purpose you dumped me in this river blah 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 she insisted for years and years and years that he had to have done that on purpose because that's what they liked to do, you know, purposefully go dump people out. He did not do it on purpose, but here she was. It's a sight you just won't ever forget, right? Here's grandma, spread eagle, laying down in the river, legs up, dress up. There's grandma. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Didn't think that he would ever live that one down or that she would ever forgive him for that. She did though, because she was really just a kind hearted soul, but she was mad as a wet hen. Oh my goodness. Of course, the rest of us were just trying to not laugh hysterically. She's fine. 
She's not hurt. She's just mad. And we're trying to not laugh too loud. You know what I mean? It was funny, though. Grandma, I love you. I know you're up there. I know you hear this story. You know he didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> she loved my dad, though. She really did. They had a good relationship. She knows he wouldn't have done it on purpose. <laughs> Anyhow, um, another canoe story. Let's tell you one more canoe story. Uh, on another trip, we had my uncle with us and some friends. I think my cousin, I think my cousin that was my best friend and became my cousin was on that trip. Anyhow, um, we were getting into canoes and whatnot, and they asked if anybody wanted to try out the kayak. They had some kayaks, too. So my uncle, my uncle's a big man, he wasn't overweight. He was just a large guy, right? He's like, yeah, okay, I'll do the kayak. I'll get in the kayak, you know? Um, and so we're all kind of in our canoes, and we're getting ready, and they're helping him get into the kayak. Now, if you know difference between a canoe and a kayak most of the time not always but most of the time a canoe is longer it's open it has like a little bench to sit on where a kayak is more you have a little hole that you get in and your feet get tucked up under the shell the nose of the kayak you know and you're kind of like in this little little circle thing where you climb in kind of um so he gets in, they're holding the, the boat, let him in, and they let go, you know, and he's got his paddle. So you paddle by yourself in the canoe, or the kayak, one person, one paddle. You got like a paddle that goes, you know, uh, on both sides, so you kind of do it all on your own. And they let go of him to let him start taking off on his own. He promptly tips it upside down. He's upside down. <laughs> he is head down in the water. And he's kind of stuck that way because he couldn't figure out how to get out. He was under for a little while. <laughs> uh, I think somebody jumped in and helped flip it right side up so he could get out. Now, mind you, this is my grandmother's son. That wet hornet, wet hen thing, whatever you want to call it. Oh, yeah, it came out. Oh, is he mad? He was so mad. <laughs> Needless to say, he did not continue to kayak. <laughs> he promptly found himself away into a canoe, not the kayak. So, yeah. The adventures of canoeing with my family are something. Now, there were many other trips that we took that were just completely uneventful, you know? Um... Nothing strange happened. We had a river that was very close to our house when I grew up as a kid. There was a river nearby. And there was a point that you could go and you could put a canoe in up the road from us. You could park there and you could go put your canoe in. And if you canoed down the river, it would end up really close to where we lived. And we did that a few times. But yeah. Now, here's the funny thing is that over the last couple months, guess who's been talking about canoes and kayaks? None other than my husband. Mm-hmm. Asking me questions like, well, what, would you like a canoe or a kayak? And I'm like, no, I like the canoe style. I like canoeing, okay? I don't like the kayak. Um, and I'd rather have somebody else in the canoe with me, you know, to help with the paddling. You don't have to do it all yourself, <laughs> you know? So he's kind of talking about it. And I'm like, okay, well, that would be interesting. That would be something we could do in our golden years here, you know. Get a little canoe and canoe around. Uh, one more canoe story. And it's from just a couple years ago. At school, we would go to camp. And uh, one of the activities at the school camp was... Um, canoeing. So it came my group's turn to go canoe. And I was out there with three, count them, three second grade girls. I'm the adult. 
three girls, trying to teach them how to paddle, how to, I was in the back. So I was the one that was in charge of steering always. All they had to do was paddle. And I would have to teach them how to paddle on this side of the boat or that side of the boat, depending on which way we were trying to go and that kind of stuff, right? So it's a very windy day. It's a fairly large lake that they have at the camp. Um, it's a fairly windy day. And I'm out here with these three young girls. One of them's a little terrified of what we're doing, a little terrified to be in the boat, right? And I'm just trying to convince her to sit down. You're fine. Don't you dare stand up. Because the second somebody stands up in a canoe, you know they're flipping it over. <laughs> sit down, chill out. You're fine. It's okay. Now the girls, a couple of them wanted to, you know, take turns moving around in the boat and trying different positions or whatnot. And I was like, no. We're just going to stay right where we're at. Everybody will get a turn to paddle, but you're just going to paddle from wherever you're at in the boat. Okay. Well, these young girls could not get the hang of paddling. They just weren't good paddlers. So most of the paddling fell on me to do. And I'm trying to steer, right? So I'm trying to steer. I'm trying to paddle. It's quite a windy day. And I'll be darned if that wind did not push us out into the furthest corner of this lake, which is very weedy, lots and lots of weeds. And if you got too far into the weeds, you would definitely get stuck out there in the weeds, right? So I'm trying to teach what I think is the strongest paddler in our group, how to just paddle, paddle, paddle. And we're trying to now paddle backwards because we're trying to make our boat go backwards now to get out of those weeds or away from those weeds. And every time we would make some progress and we would get a little further away, the girls that were paddling and helping me would give up. They'd quit paddling and the wind would blow us right back in. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, we are never, ever, ever going to get out of this corner of this lake and back over to the dock. What am I going to do? I'm going to have to do this all by myself. I cannot rely on these girls to help get us out of this mess. Finally, I mean, I was so tired. You guys, I was so tired. Now we left an adult on the shore and that adult's job was to watch out in the lake and make sure everybody was okay and nobody was having any trouble because then, you know, the lifeguard person that was in charge would come help. Well, they never signaled anybody to come help us. <laughs> I think it took like 20 minutes for me to finally, finally be able to get us away from those weeds, get us turned around so that we could then safely paddle back up to the dock. Man, I was tired. I was like, okay, I don't want to do this again. I'm not going out there again. Nope. That was my one and only experience with canoeing with young children that don't know how to canoe. Yeah. So anyhow, it's fitting that I'm telling canoe stories because there are two canoes in this picture. Isn't that some? That's funny. It just dawned on me. There are two canoes in the picture. Anyhow, there's a little bit of my adventures of the outdoors with canoeing. Maybe I'll have a bear story. Maybe I'll have an elk story. I do have an elk story. I do have a bear story too. <laughs> you guys, this is perfect. I have stories to go with this painting. It's awesome. Okay, anyhow, I think that's about all I have to say for now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the stories. <laughs> so um, until next time, keep working on your chuck. Keep posting your pictures in the appropriate places, Facebook or Instagram. And let's see what beautiful creations you're making. I'm loving mine. I'm really happy now. I'm getting into the oranges and reds in these trees up here. It's looking really, really pretty. I have an eagle. I have a bear. And I have a turkey. Yes. So now I'm getting some beautiful colored trees. I didn't want to do all the animals at once. If you went all the way across the bottom, you did all the animals. And I didn't want to do all the animals at the same time. So I'm going up and over and around and I'll finish with animals again. That's my plan. Anyhow, until next time, you guys, have a great day. 
Um, if you got some good weather, get out and enjoy your outdoors. And yeah, I will see you next time.